Thank you, Dr. American. So good uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for, for coming to this uh, important lecture. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here speaking after such a prestigious group of uh, physicians. Um, and I'm glad to be talking in this uh, Congress that has the name Controversies in it, since I'm going to be presenting a new and controversial treatment for menopausal health. You can see I'm going to be speaking about TSEC, which is the acronym for Tissue Selective Estrogen Complex. And I'm going to go through the me mechanism of action of this compound, as well as presenting new and unpublished data that uh, we are collecting in the last uh, several years. As you are very much aware, almost 80, to not say everyone, present hot flashes and vasomotor symptoms, symptoms of estrogen deficiency symptoms during the menopause. And estrogens are extremely effective for this condition. However, estrogens cannot be used in a population with uterus. Therefore, estrogen needs to be paired with something to protect the endometrium. And normally, we use progestins. Progestins plus estrogens are, of course, as efficacious as estrogens. However, there are side effects associated with this, and there are concerns around the use of estrogen plus progesterone. This induces vaginal bleeding, breast pain, fear of breast cancer, coronary heart disease, etc., etc. So everybody is aware that there are new needs, new therapies for the treatment of vasomotor symptoms and other symptoms associated with menopause. Therefore, what I'm presenting today is a new combination, a new paradigm, is the association with basidoxifen, SERM, and conjugated estrogens for the treatment of estrogen deficiency symptoms, treatment of vulvovaginal atrophy, and prevention and treatment of osteoporosis. And I want to get into the TSEC concept. TSEC, Tissue Selective Estrogen Complex, is the partnering of a SERM with one or more estrogens to achieve a clinical result based on a blended tissue selected activity profile. And I'm glad that tissue specificity was mentioned in the talks that were done previous to me. This is TSEC. And in the TSEC that I'm going to be describing today contains two specific compounds. A serum basidoxifen with all the attributes that the serum has, and conjugated estrogens, a well-known estrogen that in WHI have shown to prevent cardiovascular disease, prevent breast cancer, and prevent the mortality due to breast cancer. In basidoxifen and conjugated estrogens, basidoxifen acts as a serum, as an estrogen receptor antagonist to protect the endometrium and to protect the breast. Estrogen, conjugated estrogens on the other hand, maintains efficacy on BMS, maintains efficacy on BVA, and maintains its efficacy on bone. Basidoxifen and conjugated estrogen is the first TSEC that's been developed, and not only that, it was admitted for regulatory approval in the European Union. So hopefully all of you will have the opportunity to use this compound in the very near future. At the very simplistic level, and I don't want to complicate things, but at the very simplistic level, a TSEC activity results from the blended activity of a CERM. Do we have a pointer here? No, we don't, right? Of a CERM and an estrogen. And the net result is the blended activity of these two compounds, which the clinical profile is different of the CERM and of an estrogen. But then, if we want to complicate this, and we want to get into the mechanism of action of this compound, we need to pay attention to what happens at the estrogen receptor level. We have two different molecules binding to the estrogen receptor. We have, in yellow, the serum binding to the estrogen receptor. We have, in uh, red, one of the many estrogens containing premarin. They bind. The dimerize, they bind to the estrogen receptor element of the DNA, and they come out with a unique profile, which is different to the profile of CE, and is different to the profile of the serum. 
Now I'm going to be disclosing data that we collected in the last 10 years on BCAC, and they asked me to present this type of disclaimer. We evaluated basidoxyphen and conjugated estrogens in these so-called SMART trials. SMART trials is the acronym for Selected Estrogen Menopause and Response to Therapy. We have conducted five different clinical trials, two of them to assess the effect in osteoporosis and endometrial safety, one to assess, two of them are to assess the effect of vasomotor symptoms, one bulobashin atrophy. And I'm going to be presenting the highlights of these results. Of course, our major interest is to show that the TSEC was affected in the treatment of vasomotor symptoms. Therefore, we conducted two studies to evaluate uh, this effect. And as we normally do in this type of trials, we enroll postmenopausal women experiencing at least seven moderate to severe hot flashes in a day or 50 moderate to severe hot flashes in a week. And here you have, in this particular slide, the demographics of uh, the SMART2, where, of course, as expected, uh, the mean age of this population was around 52. And here we have the primary endpoint of this particular study. We evaluated two doses of bacidoxifen and conjugated estrogens, bacidoxifen 20 with 0.45 of conjugated estrogens, and bacidoxifen 20 with 0.625 of conjugated estrogens. And as you could see in this particular slide, there is a statistical significant reduction in the number of moderate to severe hot flashes, which is different than placebo starting at week two, and continue being different to placebo all the way to week 12, which is the end of the study. And you could see there is some time of uh, 80 to 74% of reduction in the number of hot flashes. Another aspect of this is the reduction on the severity of hot flashes. And you can see how both compounds reduce severity of moderate to severe hot flashes for approximately uh, 40 uh, to 50 percent in this particular trial. The question is, how this therapy compares to the gold standard? Okay? Since we didn't have the active comparator in our SMART2, the best piece of evidence that we can collect from the literature is a meta-analysis conducted by an Australian group where they indicated that the efficacy for the reduction of the number of hot flashes with HRT is approximately 77%. Therefore, the effect observed in SMART2 with BCAC is very comparable to the effect observed with many other compounds that were evaluated for the same medication using a similar population. Another interesting aspect of our evaluation around vasomotor symptoms is this particular uh, analysis where we evaluated how many patients or the percentage of subjects without any moderate to severe hot flashes and what you have in the uh, uh, horizontal axis is the weeks that were evaluated and you could see that approximately around 10 weeks there is approximately four 3.5 to 4 days of these patients without any single moderate to severe uh, hot flash. Bone prevention is another important uh, attribute of this compound. And we evaluated bone prevention in two SMART trials, SMART1 and SMART5. And here I'm bringing you data from SMART1. Uh, in this particular study, we have both doses of bacidoxifen and conjugated estrogens. We have placebo and we have raloxifen. So what I want to do, I want you to follow these particular slopes, and probably my point is here. So, but you cannot see it. Okay, so. I cannot do much. But here we have placebo, and as expected, after two years of treatment, they decreased bone mineral mass. We have the same raloxifen, barely maintaining bone mineral density. Okay, prevent bone loss. But here, we have the effect of both BCA-C compounds at BMD and lumbar spine. There is an increase in bone mineral density at lumbar spine of both compounds a year two of approximately 3.5 to 3.7%, which is quite remarkable and very comparable to the ones observed with estrogen plus progestins. Of course, you know, I don't want to, to, to go backwards, but the uh, WHI show clearly that conjugated estrogens are associated with the prevention of hip fractures. 
And I want to remind you that the same bacidoxifen also is associated with prevention of fractures. And here you have a, 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 a year three data showing how bacidoxifen 20 milligrams reduced the incidence of vertebral fractures for approximately 40%. So in other words, Bacidoxifen conjugated estrogens per two compounds that individually both of them have been shown to reduce bone osteoporosis fractures. Um, I'm glad that Dr. Uh, Castro presented before me a very relevant uh, aspect of menopausal treatment, which is sleep and quality of life. So we collected enough evidence in these smart trials, compelling evidence to show how BCAC improved uh, mood, sleep, and quality of life. So we evaluated in SMART2, uh, in a population of vasomotor symptoms, we evaluated uh, quality of sleep using a very, uh, very recognized and evaluated uh, sleep tool, which is the MOS scale. And as you can see, the MOS scale presents several items that are included there. And in most of the occasions, this compound at both doses improved quality of sleep. So improved the time for sleep, the sleep adequacy, the sleep disturbances. Importantly, these sleep indices contained here are uh, domains that include several of these uh, sleep conditions. So BCAC at both doses improved quality of sleep. In addition to that, we measure quality of life as relevant as it was discussed already. Uh, we selected one of the many tools that is available for the uh, measure of this uh, aspect of menopause, and we selected the MenQual. So MenQual is a validated uh, tool. It's translated in several uh, uh, countries. Therefore, the information collected is very reliable. The MenQual tool has four different domains, and I want to highlight a couple of aspects of this. This is data coming from SMART5, where we include uh, an HRT comparison. And as you can see here, and this is data a month three and month 12, both bacidoxifen and conjugated estrogens improve quality of life. Going down means a beneficial effect in a comparative way as HRT. And the effect is much more pronounced in year two. Importantly, when we look at the basomotor domain of Menqual, there is even a higher and more pronounced effect of menthol with both, both BCAC combinations. This is the HRT um, comparison, and the same, of course, at real 12. So there is no doubt that at least measuring with the menthol scale, both BCAC doses, 20.0.45 and 20.0.65, improve quality of life in postmenopausal women suffering hot flashes. I want to discuss a quite relevant uh, topic, in my opinion, which is the tolerability and the safety of these compounds. As I pointed out, you know, most of the discontinuation with HRT therapy is around bleeding, breast pain, a fear of breast cancer that sometimes is manifest as an increase in breast density. Therefore, we are we were always seeking for a therapy that doesn't contain this side effect but maintain the attributes of the estrogens. So I want us to go back a little bit to the mechanism of action of this compound. So bleeding is the main reason for this continuation with HRT, right? Estrogen plus progesterone. So this is what happened at the endometrium level in those HRT users. Estrogen plus, plus progesterone binds to the estrogen receptor and binds to the progesterone receptor, okay? Activating two different sets of genes, inducing some secretory changes in the endometrium, producing bleeding and spotting with the associated discontinuation. On the other hand, the t sect acts only through the estrogen receptor, activating only one set of genes, inducing mostly an atrophic endometrium with the consequence of being the patient's totally amenorrheic. And here, you have the data coming from SMART5. Bacidoxifen and conjugated estrogens at both doses have a similar bleeding profile as placebo. There's a total overlap. 
The bleeding profile of this compound is exactly as placebo, and here you have the bleeding profile of CMPA, which is, of course, it's much inferior, and there is enough room between the lines to, sh to claim that they are statistically different, and that's what they are. Breast tenderness and breast density is another concern that postmenopausal women and physicians has, regardless what the implication is, regardless what the association is around breast cancer, but there is no doubt that the perfect therapy for menopausal symptoms should not increase breast density, should not induce breast tenderness. And this is the data around breast tenderness with the TSEC. What you see in the blue bar is the screening incident of breast pain, and you have, what you have in the light blue bar is the incidence of breast pain at month three. And you can see placebo, the TSEC, having the exact similar incidence of breast pain. Here we have baseloxifen monotherapy, of course, not inducing breast pain, as SEMS than do, but here we have, whoop, but here we have, you know, HRT, as expected, increasing the incidence of breast pain. Therefore, again, BCDA CE uh, pre presents an advantage over hormone replacing therapy of in incumben conventional way. Breast density, another important uh, side effect of HRT. Uh, there are controversies what the HRT induced breast density means, the associations around breast cancer or not. This is for a different day, but a perfect therapy, a therapy that uh, should, should not increase breast density, and there is no doubt about that. And this is data coming from SMART5, and you can see how both BCAC combinations, as well as placebo, decrease breast density, allowing the breast to, uh, you know, involute into breast tissue, where our active comparator, CMPA, as expected, increase breast density, therefore another good attribute of the TSEC therapy. Um, and I want to discuss key aspects around safety. Of course, you know, if we're going to be treating basal motor symptoms, we need to treat them not only with the efficacious compound, not only with a compound with good durability, but also we need to be providing our patients with a safe compound. Um, first, I want to discuss the discontinuation rate. Of course, as you can see, there are many reasons for the continuation, but I want to point out the general reasons for the continuation throughout the SMART trials. As you could see, the reason for the continuation for the TSEC is the same instance as its continuation as the one observed with placebo. Let's get quickly into VTs, because all of you, I'm sure, are thinking these guys are combining estrogens that increase VTE, and they are combining a serum that also increases VTE. What happens when you put those things together? Do we have a synergism? Do we have four, five, seven, ten fold increase in VTE? No. The risk of VTE with the TSEC is the same risk that we observe with the individual components. You can see here data pulled from our SMART trials where the incidence of VTE and the hazard ratio of VTE does not exist the two, which is the same risk of VTE observed, as I said, with conjugated estrogens and with many of the serums that exist already in the market. Cardiovascular disease, the same can be said for that. There is not increased risk of cardiovascular disease with TSEC, the same incident as we observed in placebo. I want to say something which is very important because the population that we're including in the SMART trial is relevant. This is young, healthy, postmenopausal population. This is a population that needs to be treated with hormones. Therefore, that's what we're observing in this compound. We don't have data to show what will happen if we're going to be treating 75 years old women with this compound, but there is no reason to treat someone of 75 years of age with a TSEC. The appropriate uh, treatment population is a young, healthy, postmenopausal women that is suffering with hot flashes. The next slide shows the incidence of a stroke. There is not increase in the incidence of stroke, ischemic stroke, in this population, at least in our experience, in our small trials. Not increased risk whatsoever in the incidence of stroke. And 
I want to finish with this last slide, which is the issue of breast cancer. Again, both compounds, BCA and conjugated estrogens, have been shown to be either neutral or reducing the risk of breast cancer. No increase of breast cancer. We didn't see a prevention in the number of breast cancer cases, but the reason for that is because in order to show prevention of breast cancer, you need to conduct the specific trials that, you know, they will last five to ten years, and uh, we're not we're not starting the trial yet, but it's promissory, the data, particularly the preclinical data that we collected uh, when we investigated this particular point. Therefore, BCAC is a new alternative for the treatment of postmenopausal symptoms, prevention of bone loss, treatment of bulbovaginal atrophy. As I show you, it has a unique mechanism of action Induced a significant reduction in the number of vasomotor symptoms. Induced a significant improvement in bulbovaginal atrophy. This data is published, so you can, you know, read it from uh, menopause. There is a prevention of bone mineral density and reduction in bone turnover. Endometrial protection. Low rates of breast pain that is compared to placebo. High rates, high rates of amenorrhea. There's no bleeding with this compound. No increase on breast density. And there is a risk of VTE, which is the similar risk than the individual component it has. So I do believe that very soon we're going to have a new alternative for the treatment of postmenopausal women, and hopefully this will be uh, used, and this will be prescribed, and this will be shared with all of your patients. So thank you very much.